Our past videos on dividend growth ETFs have been extremely popular, and I can promise you that today's video is the best one yet. So in the past, we've compared Schwab's popular dividend growth ETF against four alternatives. Today is the last comparison. We're going to compare Schwab's dividend growth ETF, SCHD, against the iShares core dividend growth ETF, DGRO. Now, you notice I keep talking about dividend growth, and it's because it's a critically important factor for value investors. Now, you think about Warren Buffett's notion of what he calls equity bonds. So these are stocks that don't pay a fixed amount of income over time as a bond would. They pay, they pay an increasing amount of income over time, which helps offset inflation. While you're getting paid more every year, your equity values are also increasing. You're not even touching that principle. So here's why dividend growth is so important. Here's the rule of 72. So this simply says that you can take any interest rate, uh, take 72, divide it by that interest rate, and it'll tell you how many years it takes to double your money. So let's assume you earned 3.3% on your money every year. The rule of 72 would say, well, it'll take about 22 years to double your money. Well, we, we can check that with an online calculator. We've done that here. So we've put in the interest rate, the starting amount, the number of periods, and we hit calculate. And look, the future value is just over double. So it's always important to check your work and make sure that you understand intuitively how these formulas work. So next, let's look at inflation, which is the opposite effect. So it's when the cost of goods increases over time. So you hear people say, well, back in my day, a gallon of gas was a dollar. Actually, it was back in my day. Uh, today, it's what, three or four dollars. So that's inflation. And this is the important number to pay attention to. So the chart on the top shows inflation as it moves over time. And uh, this value is what we want to remember, that inflation in the United States over time from 1914 until 2023 has averaged 3.3%. So similar to how we looked at the stock market over its entire history, returning about 6.6% .6 inflation adjusted over time, this is that inflation number plugged into that. So it's important to remember this and think about it when you think about how your how today's dollar is going to decrease over time, how a fixed income such as social security or bonds, what your advisors tell you to hold most of, what happens to that as you age? What happens is your quality of life decreases over time. Now in business school, they teach you to do these time value of money calculations in your sleep. And if you're so inclined, uh, you can pull up a spreadsheet and have a go at this. If you're a premium subscriber, I'm happy to um, get on the phone or, or email and help you uh, put this together. Uh, I won't send you the spreadsheet because it's important that you learn how to do this yourself because it's quite simple. I've simply taken $100 today and plugged in the inflation rate of 3.3%, right? The amount of, uh, of our, uh, the erosion of our money over time. And we're going to see how long it takes for our money to half, not double, but to half. Here you could see that in around 20 years, our money has nearly halved. And we can use, we could check our math, use this backward flat, flat rate inflation calculator on the bottom and say, all right, $100, you plug that in, inflation rate 3.3% 20 years ago, and you can click calculate, and it tells you what, almost the exact same number. So this is a problem. If you have a fixed income in your retirement, as I said, your advisor tells you to invest in bonds, you're getting Social Security, your, your quality of life is decreasing over time. So if you retire at the age of 64, your purchasing power is going to be halved by the age of 84. That's a big problem. Here you can see life expectancy. So United Kingdom, what, 81 years, US 77, Mexico 70. So how, how can you solve for this problem? Well, you can move to Mexico and hope you die sooner, actually. That's not true. Mexico is a great place to move to. You, you probably increase your life expectancy. You can invest in a product that offsets inflation, what they call tips, or, and this is what we choose to do with our money, you can invest in a product that beats inflation. And what happens when you do that? The quality of life that you enjoy in your elderly years improves as you age. That's the ideal solution. So that brings us to dividend growth ETFs. Here you can see the comparisons that we've done so far that I talked about earlier. So SCHD as a dividend growth ETF, 
And this universe is really dividend ETFs, all right? So there's various types in, in this universe. SCHD exhibits impressive dividend growth and good yield. So that's when we first looked at them. Then we compared SCHD to VIG. Their methodology is underwhelming, and so is their yield. Noble, we then looked at them. They have a great methodology, but fees are oppressive. And then we looked at VYM. So they focus on high yield, which is subject to value traps. And here you can see that universe, right? The dividend ETF list from Vetify. Now, first of all, we don't consider anything with an expensive ratio. So that would be anything over 10 basis points. That's because expense ratio, as we've learned in our past videos, is the most important and accurate predictor of future performance. So when you can see here the ETFs that we've crossed out, that we've looked at, all right, they have an expense ratio under 10 bips. Let's compare them to SCHD. So, so far, SCHD is winning. Our last comparison is going to be SCHD versus DGRO. So let's get right into that. Now, when we compare two ETFs, we start with expense ratios. Looks like DGRO has a higher ratio than SCHD by two basis points. That's a, a bit of a problem there, though fees can change over time. So that's a strike against DGRO to start. Next, we want to look at the underlying indices. Ideally, they're going to be easy to understand so we can figure out how these two ETFs work and what exposure we're getting. So for dividend ETFs, we also want to focus on the highest growth rate, and a consistently increasing payout. So let's look at DGRO. Since we've already dug into SCHD in a past video, DGRO, the Morningstar U.S. Dividend Growth Index, is designed to target stocks with a record of consistent dividend growth and the capacity to sustain that growth. To be eligible for inclusion, stocks must be constituents of the Morningstar Global Markets Index, so the top 97% of the market cap of the investable global equities market. So they simply carve out from that the USA. That's the DGRO, U.S. Dividend Growth Index. Now, in our last video, we looked at how complex Morningstar's methodologies can be when we looked at the iShares High Dividend ETF, HDV. And the more complex a methodology is, the more likely it is that provider might charge higher fees while pointing to all their proprietary value add. Well, what we found with this Morningstar index is it's less complex. So here's their selection process. So they exclude REITs as you would expect for tax purposes. By the way, we have a coming video on SCHD and dividend taxation. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. I think the biggest question that we've got from uh, subscribers and readers is around taxation. So we're going to cover that. So after excluding REITs, they cut the dividend yield at the top. So the top 10%, this is to avoid value traps, get exited from their universe. Then they do something interesting. So they look at payout ratio less than 75%. That makes sense. But the way they do it is rather odd. They do it forward looking instead of backward looking. So they use consensus earning estimates and then the past dividends to predict what payout ratio will look like. And of course, they exclude anything uh, with a payout ratio higher than 75%. They're trying to make sure that they have companies that are likely to increase their dividends over time. And that's this last factor here. They want to see at least five years of consecutive dividend growth. We'll compare that to 10 years for SCHD. So that's a rather low threshold. And then they rank them in proportion to the value of their dividend payments, essentially yield. And they, as I said, excluding REITs and passive foreign investment companies for tax purposes. So the next thing that people tend to want to look at would be price performance. And our last piece on VOO versus VTI shows you how performance comparisons should be done. Actually, somebody else did it and we showed you their great work. That they took 60 years of data and did a performance comparison and found that they were nearly exact. So the further you went back, the closer the returns converged. It's very interesting, though year to year it's volatile. So people that compare ETFs, you know, doing a last year, year to date, completely pointless. And you also need to remember that backwards performance comparisons don't tell us much to begin with. And when you do that, be careful about comparing ETFs because you may have fee changes or index changes that get in the way of those performance comparisons. What you need to do is compare the underlying indices. So in the case of SCHD versus DGRO, 
you'd look, I put the tickers here, right? MS, DIV, GT, and DJ, DVP. So those are the indices. They have 19 and 20 years data, respectively. You need to do an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. So that has to be total return with dividends reinvested. Now, access to the index data the providers charge you for this stuff is going to limit this exercise, which isn't overly valuable to begin with. So let's instead look at dividend growth performance. So because of data limitations, we can only do this for nine years. So the compound annual growth rate for DGRO, 8.2%, compare that to SCHD at 9.8%. So SCHD is winning in that respect. Now, when you have a higher dividend growth number, what you can get away with is having a lower yield because then you can catch a higher yield over time. So the next question is, what does the yield look like for these two ETFs? And it's rather surprising. Intuitively, you would expect a higher growth uh, ETF to have a lower yield, and that's not the case. So SCHD you see on the top here, along with these great charts from Y charts, which show us that yield plotted over time. Look at how SCHD broke the 4% yield mark uh, when we had the Rona reaction there in the markets. Same with DGRO. But what you notice about DGRO's chart is that it stays rather low and doesn't get very close to that 4% over time while SCHD uh, flirts with that 4% more. So you're consistently getting a higher yield with SCHD. Why? Probably because DGRO has that yield capping, right? They cut the top 10% yield stocks out of their universe. So that's something very important to note. Now, when it comes down to declaring the winner, you have SCHD with the larger AUM, that's assets under management of $52 billion versus Degro at $25 billion. So uh, the Schwab ETF is better positioned to lower their fees going forward. Well, DGRO is already starting out with higher fees. So let's pretend they're equal. If they were, then the SCHD index uses dividend growth as a factor. DG growth doesn't look at growth, surprisingly. Uh, they have a lower consecutive years threshold, as we said, at five years versus Schwab at 10 years. And Schwab has a higher yield and will likely enjoy that going forward. So we believe SCHD comes out ahead in this comparison. And it's really easy to understand why they become such a popular dividend growth ETF. Now, when we look at the factor comparison table here, we can see the basic factors of each strategy for DGRO and SCHD. And then I've added quantigent. So that's our own proprietary strategy. And you can see how we have more factors. Uh, we have a higher threshold for consecutive years. So we only include champions. That's 25 consecutive years or more. And I've listed out the various factors we use here. And you can see. So in our universe of about 80 plus stocks, we've picked 30 and built our own portfolio. And you can see here the comparison of our portfolio against the universe average. So we have a, a higher yield. It looks like we're really allocating money to higher market cap stocks across that that universe. And then you can see highlighted on the right, the 10 year dividend growth rate, that's something to watch. So we just refreshed the data, we license our data for this strategy from NASDAQ, we spent over a decade developing this. And it looks like for our own portfolio, 10 year dividend growth rate has dropped a little bit below the universe average. And I'm pretty sure that uh, that's explanatory when you read the report, it's just based on our own personal selection preferences, you might choose to select stocks differently. And what's interesting about this, remember our rule of 72, that 9% means that not say our universe average of 9.6, that means your income doubles in just 7.5 years. That's what we're talking about, not having our income eroded. So if you want to build your own dividend growth portfolio, instead of investing in an ETF, if you're somebody that has the time and um, energy to do that and willingness to learn on how this stuff works. It's, it's actually quite simple. You can choose from the universe of 80 stocks that we have in this report. It's fully repl replicable in Excel. That's important. Getting the data and cleaning it, that's more difficult to do. And that's the value that we add there. So the entire selection process for our own portfolio is detailed in this report. It's 41 pages. As I said, we spent over a decade developing this with my colleagues. It's th where the majority of our money right now is invested. And right now, this report, you'll see it below this video. It's available on sale 
for $49.99 instead of the usual $99.99. The reason we did that is we want to show you the value of the products that we produce. So it reminds you of that Dollar Shave commercial. He says, are our products any good? No, our products are fucking great. And they really are. And people tell us that. So if you're somebody that already purchased this report for full price, we'll send you the latest update. We're going to run this sale for about a week. And we don't run many sales, so make sure you act fast. Now, video is coming up next. We're going to look at Quantigen's factor performance, methods of managing your portfolio, how a portfolio strategy might evolve over time. As I said, dividend taxation. And we're going to be um, driving a lot of that data for these presentations from this uh, paper that we did on our strategy, modeling a unique approach to factor-based investing as part of a dividend growth investing strategy. So I'm going to put up another video here, very appropriate one on the best dividend growth ETA, ETF, that's SCHD. Give that a watch if you haven't. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this today.